Hello traders, welcome to the weekly outlook and setups volume 223, the first weekly outlook for 2024. First of all, happy new year to everybody. Firstly, I would like to wish all of you health because without health, we cannot really do anything at all. Lots of love, happiness, luck, prosperity, and may all of your dreams come through in 2024. All right, so back into the game right now after uh, some social media detox after some rest uh when doing some fun stuff like skiing traveling a little bit spend some good time with the family and right now finally ready to get back at it it is the second week of january and january is known to be a little bit slower right uh but i spent spotted that in december the market was pretty fast so i don't really think that the market is going to be slow so after nfp this week right now it's time to actually get into the markets get into the zone and see what we could be doing for the rest of this month so pretty much right now we're going to have a a monthly analysis see what is happening see where we could potentially be going after nfp again as i said the market is going to get cleaner so we're going to go forward uh, straight with the analysis I am still quite outside of the zone. This is the first time I'm looking at the charts since like, I think around one and a half weeks. So uh, bear with me as I get into the zone and sharpen my analysis and trading as well. So without further ado, let's head into the video and get cracking. All right, as always, we're going to get started with the Dixie. But before we do that, we got to check out the economic calendar, which is not very, very busy for next week. Uh, but we can see on Monday uh, a lot of euro news. So the euro is definitely going to make a move on Monday. Then on Tuesday, we have like some JPY, nothing very important. Unemployment rate for the eurozone. That is important. Wednesday does look like a dead day. Uh, we have absolutely nothing on that day. So again, be careful trading on Wednesday because most likely Wednesday is going to set up for Thursday, during which we have CPI for the US, initial jobless claims as well, very important. So again, Monday and Tuesday could be nice trading days, Wednesday, skip, Thursday, trade, but after CPI. And then of course on Friday, you can see we have a PPI, very important, uh, here we have some GBP news. So yeah, pretty much again, you can see, I'm starting to implement a little bit more uh, looking at news, not really trying to understand like uh, the, the news release and the numbers and this and that, because I do believe what I've spotted is that news are like this um, flashbang grenade that gets thrown for the market to move, right? So again, if you don't have news on Wednesday, well, the market doesn't have a reason to move, right? But if you have CPI on Thursday, oh, well, that is when the market is going to be making a move. And that can pretty much help you to frame your trading week to know, okay, on that day, I'm going to be resting on that day. I'm going to be all in and actually having a look at some potential trading opportunities now with that being said let's have a look at the monthly time frame on the dollar so what we have recently is like this push up and then this push down i don't like it because we don't really have momentum to the upside and right now we're having a lot of momentum to the downside and i am overall bearish on the dxy again not gonna go into fundamentals and stuff overall my macro outlook for the dollar is bearish first target is going to be the previous monthly high and then of course the sorry previous monthly low and then, of course, the second target is going to be this low right there that the market is really failing to continue from it. So that is pretty much how I think. Uh, here we have a little bit of an imbalance. You know that since recently I have been um, looking a lot of imbalances and it's something that I add to my trading plan and I actually love it. So are we going to be reaching here? I don't think so. It does look very far away, but I would just keep this monthly um, imbalance area right there in mind because the market could reach out for this. But then... As we are bearish right now on the monthly time frame, we transition onto the weekly. And you can see this week and pretty much this month started with one bullish week, right? So what does that mean is that, of course, if we are overall bearish bias, then, of course, having a buy candle like this, that pretty much is going to be offering us short setups. And what I really like is that we have this candle right here. Now I'm going to get a lot of uh, rectangles going on right there, but we also have this imbalance right that the market is perfectly respecting on the weekly now when you have an imbalance on the hard time frame usually the hard time frame is the one that to get respected uh, but this in this case i would personally like to trade from that weekly zone right here because we have uh, this very nice buy to sell and that monthly is very far away i really don't think we're gonna get like one or even two more weeks into that 
before we start reversing but who knows maybe january could be a bullish month so that then maybe february can start selling off after tapping inside this monthly imbalance right but right now i do believe on the short term we could start looking for shorts immediately as we tap inside this weekly zone and if of course this weekly zone fails then we know that the market is potentially going towards the monthly okay now getting it into the daily um we had a <laughs> interesting start of the year we had a very massive tuesday wednesday was good and then we had the pretty much two choppy days thursday was very very choppy again why well because in preparation for nfp on the next day so if you actually frame your trading week um according to the news then you're saying okay thursday pre nfp i'm not gonna trade then nfp comes in of course like we have a whipsaw up and down tapping inside this um this weekly zone right there and perfectly respecting it so right now the key is to see are we going to start reversing lower or are we going to start kicking it higher right so you can see currently like on the daily the structure is a little bit bullish and we have formed this little imbalance right there again i'm not sure whether this is correct right here because we have pretty much this the first of january was a um a bank holiday right but then the market formed this tapped inside and tapped inside so if i am to listen to a bias it's going to be the hard time frame which is the weekly so i'm going to remain bearish and now the most important time frame right now to look at is the four hourly time frame right here so again keep in mind that we have a daily zone right here but the four hourly tapped in reacted but you can see the first time we tapped inside this imbalance the market didn't really do anything but then again it prepared for nfp nfp came in swept that previous daily high this is wednesday's high and then we of course swept thursday's high and then massively rejected lower also another confluence is that we're having a break of structure to the downside right of course we have this uh, very big uh, zone right uh, but what i also like is that we formed a little bit of an imbalance right here uh, which pretty much kind of makes that trade idea high probability so i have two scenarios for the dxy first scenario something that i would really love to see is for us to tap inside here and start continuing lower to be making new structure breaks which essentially means that our first short-term target will be this if we make a break of structure to the upside with imbalance and with a lot of strength on the forward time frame then i will remain bullish until potentially that monthly zone right here so again guys next week is going to be very key to actually see if the order flow is going to change to bearish so we can of course start then targeting uh these monthly lows right here so that is my dixie outlook very short very simple bearish bias let's see of course how the rest of the pairs are going to align with that all right euro usd monthly time frame so what we had in december is a very nice bullish month and what i really like about this bullish month is that it also formed with imbalance that of course imbalance suggests strength in the market because if you don't have imbalances then the market is just choppy and again if you reflect back at this year if you actually have a look at the monthly time frame you can see there was no imbalance all the way until september that we formed this imbalance right there there was absolutely nothing so if we actually look at the details and just be logical if the market was going to go bearish from here it also formed this bearish imbalance but then the market engulfed it very nicely and it formed an imbalance in the opposite way so of course what does that tell me is that uh, potentially buyers are in control right now and then that we might potentially go higher right so of course what is going to be the next target this monthly high and of course the previous monthly high as well so bullish bias on the euro which pretty much resembles what i said on the dixie now here there is a little detail because on the dixie we had that weekly imbalance on eu we do not have anything so of course we could expect this one to reach lower and if this one reaches lower then of course the dxy is going to reach higher so again this is what we have to figure out next week what are we going to do what i really do like are the last uh, three weeks of september of december right here we had a push up push up very nice push up reaching a high and right now we're starting a pullback so if we do not have anything to work on the weekly uh, we have a nice pullback which is good let's see what do we have on the daily right and the daily is pretty messy right now and the daily is so far a little bit bearish so again like we have the break structure here we have a trend change down there and we have this strange um imbalance that formed um like on the 2nd of january we push down but again I'm, i don't think this one is valid because this one is a pretty dead candle right it doesn't exist and then we kind of made this imbalance but we tapped in and we reacted and right now and, and after nfp it is pretty unclear so if i just look at eu right now 
I don't have any confluences. I don't have any hard time from confluences to work with. The daily time frame to me is still a little bit bearish. So I would be looking for some nice bullish daily candles to form within balance in order to say that my daily long term bias is bullish. And then, of course, if you also have a look on the forward time frame, like it, it's just messy, right? It broke down, it broke up, then it wicked down. And right now, technically, it's bullish, but with this very big wick, we do have this little guy right here. We do have this little uh, imbalance, which is the only thing to work with. But as we don't have anything on the hard time frames, and if still the daily is bearish, then of course, trading a forward bullish um, setup is not going to work out. So I hate saying this, uh, but of course, a lot of times you just don't have any clues. You don't have any setups. And that is OK. What I'm going to say on EU is that I'm just going to wait. I will wait to see how the DXY is going to respond from this zone right there. And if the DXY starts rejecting lower from this weekly zone, then I would expect EU to also start popping higher and maybe um, and go of this daily imbalance. That is later going to suggest that we're going to be breaking out these highs. Because currently, I just don't like this price action. Like it broke up, it broke down here. Then right now it's breaking up with a wick. Um, no clear zones apart from this imbalance area right there, but we're then tapped inside this daily bearish area. I am not sure. What I would love to see is something like this, of course, to confirm that we are reversing, but only then I'm going to try to go long. So that is EU, not very clear. Let's wait a little bit. We do have some news. We have CPI for the US. We have a lot of Euro news coming on Monday as well. So let's be patient and wait for the price to tell us what it wants to do. Euro yen being a yen pair, um, they don't usually give a lot of clear setups. We can see on the monthly time frame, it is overall bullish. We had a very nice bearish December. January starts a little bit bullish, but no clues at all. Again, overall bullish, but that is all I can find from the monthly time frame. So we immediately transition to the weekly. Now, the weekly had this very nice drop again, like this is that bearish monthly candle that also did form a very nice trend change with a wick. So when you have trend changes with wicks, usually not a very good sign. But what we also have on top here is this weekly imbalance, again, suggesting a lot of strength. And you can see that the market is failing. It, it formed the imbalance. It came in for one week. It tried. No, it came in for another week. It tried. No, and this week we're actually going bullish, right? So if we actually close above this weekly imbalance, that I could say that potentially we are turning bullish again with the bullish monthly time frame. So... Dropping then onto the daily time frame, you can see overall the most recent price action is not good. So we just have like up and down, up and down, up and down. Not clear. I wouldn't trade this market right now. Uh, in 2024, I'm going to be very, very, very picky with my setups because after going through my trades, I spotted that a lot of my losses are just trades that don't really make sense. They're not yes trades. They're not aligned with the hard time frames, trading from a hard time frame area, trading with good confluences because... If you align the hard time frames and if you just get a very simple entry model, then you're going to be profitable. But while a lot of us are just dropping to the 50 minute to the five minute trying to force something, and of course, we're going to lose. So right now, um, I mean, we push up, down, try to push higher, fail, try to push lower, fail, then try to push higher, fail. Nothing to work with right there. And we're still bearish on the daily. Yes, uh, sorry, on the weekly. On the daily time frame, we did form this very recent... Um, daily imbalance that could potentially give us some clues about the market continuing higher uh, but then of course you're going to see that the forward time frame is right now at the top chopping so what i would like to see on this one if it's going to continue higher and if of course for example euro usd is going to go higher for us to tap in right here and then start shifting bullish on the forward because the forward time frame right now is um it's depends on really how you look at structure that could be a structure break according to me it's not valid actually so we're still trading between this low and this high, according to me. So according to me, we're still uh, bullish. But just in case, I'm going to be looking for some sort of an alignment from this daily area in order to confirm that we're going to go higher. So that is your yen. Not very clear. Overall bullish on the monthly. The weekly time frame is still bearish. But after seeing this imbalance failing to respond, then I would expect for this one to get broken. So I am more bullish than bearish which also resonates with my bullish bias on EU and bearish bias on the DXY. So let's see. Let's have a look at Aussie dollar. So in the monthly time frame, we have two very nice months right there, November and December, pretty bullish, suggesting that the market could be reversing higher. And uh, what I really do like is that we have momentum. So first of all, like if you just follow structure and if you follow the imbalances, which is something that I've been training to do, 
usually imbalances get respected because if the market is going down creating strength to the downside creating an imbalance it usually should respect but in this case you can see we broke it and we created one to the upside and again what does that mean to me is that currently buyers are in control on the monthly time frame which is pretty much the highest time frame that we look at of course i'm i look just for fun at the yearly but <laughs> i don't know right it's it's way too much so this imbalance is a little bit low so again it's gonna take the market maybe even a full month maybe even two to reach here so i'm not gonna expect that one way too much but if i start seeing the weekly and the daily start forming bearish structure then of course that will be my potential draw on liquidity right so draw on liquidity is pretty much uh where is the market going right in terms of the higher time frames so currently um we don't have a lot of clues like on the weekly time frame we had a very nice pop up right now we are pulling back you can see that we have this uh, imbalance that was very high but it's engulfed right it could still respond but it's engulfed which is something that i don't like and uh yeah of course we have this um sell to buy here on the weekly so there is going to be some support some demand from here but first of all i would like to see the daily and the hourly time frames to shift bullish and if they remain bearish as i told you then this is going to be my potential target which means that we're going to be having a bearish month so again the aussie is a little bit 50 50 so currently we pushed up and right now we're pushing down nothing clear really it's it's all confusing that weekly imbalance got broken then of course we have this uh daily one right there that is not being retested on the daily time frame of course we had an nfp and then of course if we drop to the hourly time frame we do have a, across all pairs like a little bit of bullishness because the xy shifted lower right so the rest of the pairs are shifting higher so i am just going to stick with that sentiment uh but that sentiment is is fully going to depend on the dxy where do the dxy actually holds from here because the dxy looks like a great short setup and if that short setup comes to fruition then of course all the usd pairs like aussie euro gbp usd are going to go higher so currently if i just sold focus on the quality time frame we of course have this quality structure break we have this imbalance and something that i would love to see happening is, is something like this and then of course you do your first target is going to be the daily high and yeah that is pretty much it again monthly time frame is bullish but if we ask the question okay where are we going to be going higher from potentially uh it could be that monthly low monthly um imbalance right here but it's too far away on the weekly time frame we have this right there together with this overall zone which is a high probability longing area daily time frame no clues at all there is no bullishness there is overall bearishness coming in as this pullback right there and the quality time frame is the only time frame giving us a little bit of a bullish sign right here so again let's be patient let's see usually the best setups are going to come in after we confirm here that we're going to go higher and then usually the market is again going to make bullish structure and it's going to make bullish imbalances that you can potentially follow right so again be patient and wait but let's see how this week is going to go for the aussie also jpy is a pair that i just wouldn't touch at all look at the monthly time frame there is no clear direction there is no clear momentum there is no clear imbalance nothing right the the last like you can see the last since july we didn't really move anything just up and down nothing to extract on the monthly time frame then you go to the weekly and of course if the monthly is like this the weekly is also not going to tell you much we have this pop up we have this very nice bearish move right here uh which which also formed imbalance which is a very good thing to see imbalances but again you can see it comes in comes in comes in again it fails to continue pushing lower which is not a good thing and then most likely the daily time frame could show us a little bit of a bullishness right yeah you can see here if you just read it there was that massive push up came into the imbalance and it attacked the daily high but after it took out that daily high it started rushing lower right it started rushing lower did it make any imbalances uh yeah a little bit right there uh and then potentially it pulled back into something on the weekly it's very confusing it's very confusing but what we have very recently on the daily is this kind of v-shape it pushed down then back up right and currently what we can work with on the daily is this little daily imbalance that can act as potential support and then on the forty time frame we don't have anything uh like to close the week with just choppy price action so the only thing i see is a potential long from that daily zone of course if we get forward time frame confirmations and uh, and of course lower time frame alignments from that forward confirmation 
What I mean is that the, the forwardly time frame is going to come bearish into that zone. So preferably, I would like to see a forwardly time frame to shift higher. But of course, you can still drop to the 50 minute, to the 30 minute, to the hourly time frame to look for bullish shifts from that area that could potentially show you that it might go higher. But once again, Aussie JPY is definitely not a pair that I will be touching, but this is what I would expect on this one. The NZD is usually the same as the Aussies. Here we have, again, those two very nice bullish months. And of course, if we have a look at the left, we had this uh, imbalance rider that actually got respected. You can see that we just pinged into it and we created the whole bearish month, which is very good in October. But then, of course, if the market was going to go bearish and potentially break out the slow, it should have gone lower. But what it did is it reversed higher, creating, again, a bullish imbalance right here, which is pretty good. And we have this bullish imbalance across uh, all pairs. And I'm so clumsy with um, everything still. So, yeah, right now, again, the where the market could go higher from on the monthly time frame is going to be uh, this potential area right here. But is it going to reach all the way that um, that lower? To take out the previous monthly low, I don't know, right? I don't know. And usually if there is something on the weekly to hold price, that could work out. But again, the only thing on the weekly was this, similar to the Aussie, which is kind of being broken right now. But still, we have this sort of big zone right there to hold price. So let's see. Let's see. Now, dropping onto the daily time frame again, like you can see, it's just choppy. What we had is similar on the rest of the pairs. We had this daily imbalance that formed on the um, pr pretty much on the year open with top 10 and we continued lower uh, but again like the last three days are just choppy so what i can say i cannot say anything there is no weekly kind of clear setup there is no clear daily setup and then of course we're going to drop on the forward time frame and we're going to be seeing this very recent bullish shift higher right so this is the only kind of setup uh that i see but you can see that i started using a little bit more of the higher time frames because what I also spotted is that sometimes I just say, okay, well, I'm a day trader, so I'm going to trade 4 hour, 50 minute, and 1 minute. And guess what? You're still going to lose because you never look at the hard time frames. Because again, daily, weekly, and monthly are pretty important. Like monthly, not that much, but a lot of times the daily. Like a lot of times the daily. Because if your 4 hour setup fails, so if this right now, if I tell you, well, okay, we have a bullish break of structure with imbalance we're gonna go long from here and then the market is gonna do this why well because we're still bearish on the daily right the daily is gonna be bullish if it starts impulsing higher right and creating of course bullish imbalances like this here is a daily bullish market there it is massive push up pulls back daily is bullish massive push up pulls back push pull back and then in this case you can see those imbalances right there are being respected and that is when you trade easily that is when you trade easily and you also drop to your lower time frames as that is when you get the best setups. Right now, trying to force something is usually not very good. But again, similar to the rest of the pairs, we have this uh, recent bullish alignment. I would potentially love to see this one to hold and then for us to make another one to the upside to potentially show me that bullish order flow. All right, so I'm going to leave it here. There is nothing clear so far in terms of the hard time frame. So again, guys, we just got to wait. We just gotta wait and that is okay so that is nzd usd nzd jpy overall bullish on the monthly time frame but again you can see since july it's just kind of a little bit choppy which means that as we drop to the weekly time frame there is not going to be much happening uh, of course we have this uh, push up then we pull back we actually hold from this overall zone you can see we never broke it with a body and then of course you can see on the way down we formed this bearish imbalance but right now it's being engulfed so what i can say is that based on just this logic going through the, that the overall momentum of the market i could say that this could be our next target so again on um, the monthly we have nothing on the weekly we don't have much then we drop to the daily time frame and again you can see here we had a pop-up we pull back and right now we're having a another pop-up right here with a very nice daily imbalance right here so I'm immediately going to say what my setup will be is similar to AJ, I believe. A pullback inside that daily zone, lower time from alignment. And then, of course, first target is going to be this high, which is our daily high. And then, of course, long term target could be that overall uh, monthly high right there. So very simple setup. That is what I'm going to be looking for. And let's see what happens. All right, let's have a look at the USDJPY, which is like the DXY, but for the JPY pairs. Well, again, the last two months bearish. Right now we're opening and we still don't have any information. Uh, we do have this bearish candle to potentially hold price. 
but it's not very strong because you can see like there is no like clear imbalances on the way up, which does not suggest uh, strength going higher. Dropping onto the weekly, um, nothing here as well. Like the last pretty much December, down, down, then choppy week, then down again, and then right now we're having a nice impulse. So if the next weekly candle pushes very nicely higher and it creates a, a weekly imbalance right here, that is when I'm going to say that I'm more confident for longs on USDJPY. However, the Dixie is bearish, so I would not expect USDN to go higher as much, but we also don't, don't have any confidences for it to go lower. Dropping onto the daily time frame, uh, we had a very nice break lower. Again, you can see here we have this very beautiful imbalance. The market comes in, respects it, takes out the daily low, but then it fails to continue going lower and it reverses higher with, uh, with a very nice daily imbalance right there, which could be something that we could uh, look for the market to tap. And uh, we did form a little one right here as well. Like that is very, very, very little. You can see I look a lot of imbalances nowadays because again, I really tested it a lot. I really looked into it. And what I spot is that, oh, come on, this is way too little. I can't even draw it. What I spot is that the market a lot of times reacts from imbalances. And again, a lot of us are like what we saw on YouTube is like, yo, this is like my refined OB. This is my refined candle. And we expect for those levels to tap. Well, no, the market forms structure and usually you're going to see imbalances within good structure, right? So in this case, we have a very nice pop up to daily imbalance areas. So what we're just simply going to be doing is expecting for the market to reach there and then go to a lower time frame to start looking for alignments, right? And look for the same thing that we look at on the, on the higher time frames. Right now, uh, in terms of the quality time frame, uh, I would expect this low to get tapped which means that we can go short into it from this hourly imbalance, right? So what I would say that this is a low probability trade, but something that I would say could happen is something like this. And then from there, we have to see what is going to happen. Is the market going to start forming bullish structure from these daily zones, or is it going to just continue dropping lower, creating new imbalances, creating new bearish structure. And then from there, uh, we're just going to get potentially even lower. And again, that depends on the Dixie. It is still a little bit early to say what is going to happen for sure. So again, guys, let's wait. And we have a whole year ahead of us. GBPUSD is very interesting because we're having, again, that engulfment of an imbalance. And again, I do think in the ICT smart money realm, this is called like an inverted um, fair value gap and stuff like this. But I look at things more for their logic rather than their names because I see like this cult of uh, SMC and then stuff is like very, this is what he said, this is what is going to happen. Well, no, try to actually think about why this happens and why it is actually something that is being thrown out there, right? Uh, but again, I do um, I do want to, to say that I really do love those imbalances and those fair value gaps because that is, is pretty much suggesting strength in the market inefficiency so and this candle right there for example there were only sellers only only sellers and not really any buyers could enter into the market and then as you see this candle then of course the third one forms and then you could expect for the market to come back to rebalance this area and then continue going higher for example there it is right there a very big fat bullish candle the market comes into rebalance then it continues higher but in this case the market engulfed this again we had this situation on quite a couple of pairs during this analysis it engulfed the bearish one and it formed a bullish one, which is very good. That, that, that pretty much means reversal. And even if your monthly time frame structure is bearish, let's say that you think that this is your break of structure right there. And you say, oh, I'm going to trade from here, from this zone, right? Well, it's, it's not, in my opinion, uh, again, in the past, I, did, I used to do this. But right now, as I look more into momentum, and um, again, mo by momentum, how do you define momentum is by having those very big candles. And how do you define those very big candles is by having that kind of gap between those three candles, which again has been a uh, very big insight for me because I always neglected those imbalances and fair value gaps. And right now we have this. I do believe right now that GU could come back to retest this one because it's very close to price. And again, if the market is going to make a new monthly leg higher to potentially target that high and even to target that high right here, it's going to need to uh, to grab something from the um, uh, from the buy side right there or sell side, whatever it's called. And I do believe like the previous month low, which is exactly where that imbalance is resting, is a very good target. Now, in order to get there, we would need some sort of clues on the lower time frame. As you can see on the weekly, we don't have anything. 
we don't have anything and there are two situations that i see happening the first situation will be for us to sweep the monthly high that is going to be adding liquidity so this is where potentially like we're going to have liquidity on top and then the market could start reversing lower to target that monthly and then it could start reversing higher to, uh, with the monthly trend okay but then of course the second scenario will be for us just from here to start rolling down tapping there and then to potentially go higher because again for the market to reach a specific level it needs liquidity it needs orders and again where are orders usually located like above highs and lows we know this so if the market is going to reach this monthly uh, zone right here it probably has to grab something from the top to reach there right and then of course as it comes inside this monthly zone you can see it's going to be grabbing these lows right here to then reach higher so currently gu the exact positioning of gu is not very good it's not very good we have this very nice bearish drop on the daily right there we do have this daily imbalance but again you can see this imbalance mm -mm. it formed came in reacted but then nfp came in and kind of a little bit destroyed it so as of right now dropping onto the 40 time frame it is not very high probability why well because we don't have anything on the weekly we don't have much on the daily in fact the daily is kind of looking a little bit more bullish than bearish and then yeah you can see on the quality time frame we have this very recent um bullish imbalance and this very recent bullish shift of structure that we have across uh all pairs right so personally once again i would love to give it a little bit more time to uh, again i'm not gonna just jump straight into into live trading as i'm just getting into the charts so again i excuse my clumsiness i'm still a little bit clumsy on the charts uh but this is currently what i'm going to be looking for again confirmation are we going to tap here and respond and go higher if this happens then i'm going to target this high with expectation that the market might potentially be grabbing liquidity to come back to retest this monthly zone but again as you know my motto is to always flow with the markets if you just continue going higher and making bullish structure why would i expect this one to tap it will not so again i'm just going to keep following if it starts going higher but again, if you start inversing lower and if you start making bearish structure, then of course, I'm going to start targeting this monthly zone right here. So again, it all depends on how this week is going to go. Let's see how this forward uh, zone works. And let's see, of course, how the daily is going to develop. It is still too early to say anything. We're still in a choppy kind of market uh, from December. So again, guys, chill. Don't just rush into the market first week in January, even second week of January. Give it some time. We have a whole year ahead of us. Ahead of us. Don't start your year in the wrong way. So yeah, pretty much that's GU. I will be getting more clues as we go forward. For now, I don't really have a clear bias. GJ being a JPY pair, once again, not very clear. You can see since July, it is just chopping around. So no clear direction on the monthly time frame. Dropping onto the weekly. We had this very nice bearish show. weekly push right here. It didn't really take out this low which is a good thing because that could be a very good target and uh, unlike all the JPY pairs that actually retested uh, their weekly imbalances and uh, kind of failing to continue down from them this one is still hasn't tapped this one right it tried it tried here and then just this week we're coming into it so uh, going into next week it is going to be very key to monitor how this one is going to form but looking at how this candle forms um, and if of course the sentiment is going to be overall bearish dollar and bullish everything else we could have another bullish candle right here to create a bullish imbalance that is going to mean that once again the, this weekly imbalance is being inverted to the upside and then we're going to start targeting this high so again in terms of gj not clear on the higher time frame but dropping onto the daily right now which is a lower time frame um based on if we look on the weekly so dropping onto the daily we do have this very nice pop-up very nice pop-up again you can see here one imbalance here two imbalance here again i also have the question which one is going to get uh, retested usually if you have uh like three in this case what i found is if you have three imbalances if the first one fails the last one is going to get respected if you have two uh, then of course you have to look like if it aligns with with something to the left or and of course if it's uh, in equilibrium and this sort of stuff but i don't worry much about this because the market is going to come in right here and if it starts showing me hourly signs and hourly and 50 minute signs of potential bullishness i'm gonna see and i'm going to potentially go long with a hard time from area of interest like this daily imbalance right and if this one just gets disrespected then i know that the market could potentially be reaching for this one right here 
So dropping onto the 40 time frame again, similar to the rest of the JPYs, we have a daily manners right there. I'm going to be looking for the market to tap in sight and then see signs for potential bullishness. That's it. Nice and simple. And then, of course, that is going to be our target. But first, we have to start that bearish push because we ended the week bullish. So we're still making a higher high and it could start and also tap inside that weekly imbalance. And then it could start reacting and pushing us lower. OK, so that is kind of the second scenario. So again, guys, we have to wait uh, for the market to open, see what's going to happen and then react and flow with it. All right. All right, let's have a look at gold, which is very tricky right now. So after we made new all time highs and after we kind of went above the previous all time highs, that was a very nice triple top. We very massively rejected above it. And you can see December's monthly candle is rather big. So we have a very big kind of a monthly range in terms of the last candle. And right now we're opening and we haven't done much. So in terms of the monthly time frame, there is no imbalances on the way up, which is not good because that does not suggest a lot of monthly bullish strength. Then we drop on the weekly time frame and we had it here. Like you can see from here, exactly that same thing I mentioned to you about the in inversion of the imbalances. We had a very nice move down, but then we had a very nice move up. Then, of course, we have two imbalances. And as I told you, just on GBPUSD, which one is going to hold? Well, usually you just drop to lower time frame. Look to see if this one is going to hold. Does it align with something else to the left? Is it in premium and discount? And of course, if the first one um, doesn't hold, then it's going to be the last one that holds, right? This one held, massively pushed higher. Then we have uh, this little boy right here. But this imbalance, I do believe, formed after we massively went higher. Oops, let me just drop the day. Yeah, first we massively went higher. Then we came back into it. We came back into it. And again, you can see we're respecting it, which is like wicking below it. And right now we're trying to move higher. Uh, but again, it's still too early to like there is no volume yet. And again, you can see here we had another little imbalance right there. And NFP week right now. Again, guys, it's just not clear. Then we drop. I I'm overall bullish bias on gold. Like again, technically, it should be reaching for new all time highs. But uh, after taking all of this liquidity, I really don't know how it's going to be developing going forward now. On the daily time frame, again, like we had this push lower coming in from this weekly zone and the market immediately goes higher. And what does it form? Daily imbalance. There is your long trade. This is what I speak about, like having a hard time frame zone and then you start seeing all the lower time frames aligning. Like we had a weekly zone right there, daily aligns. There is your long trade going higher, right? Uh, but right now, right now we... The last thing I see on the daily is this bearish zone right here. And again, NFP went into it and went out of it. Not clear, not clear. And then it dropped on the 40 time frame. You had a breakdown and then you have a breakup with a wick. No. Um, yeah, I mean, <laughs> no idea what is what is happening on gold. I don't have a bias. So again, just pure honesty, I don't know what to expect here. Again, I would always refer to the hard time frames. And I'm going to say that the weekly time frame is bullish and that this is my target. But in order to get there, in order to get there, we need to start forming daily legs to the upside and we need to start forming forward legs to the upside. Right now, the most recent price action after NFP is just madness. So again, guys, we don't have anything to work with. So don't force it. Wait, don't jump just into the year and like gold and this and that. It's going to be volatile. It's going to be good. Wait for a clear setup. And that is when you got to go in. Right. So right now, not clear. So stay tuned for my next analysis videos which hopefully it's going to start making more sense. Well, indices are also going to be tricky right now. Again, Happy New Year for indices. We reached all time highs on US 30 and NASDAQ. SPX couldn't really made it all the way up. So right now, again, we have massive two months to the upside. Again, momentum is to the upside. So that is the last uh, monthly imbalance, which is pretty good. So that is potentially where we could look for the market to reach. But when it's too far away and when like the the, sec the third candle of the imbalance is very big like this, usually it doesn't come back to retest, right? This is something that I've observed. And then usually like an imbalance on the lower time frame is going to respect, let's say, like this weekly one. So again, you can see I'm framing a lot of my analysis right now based on imbalances because again, structure is good. Uh, but then again, your question comes in, how do I know when the market pushes up? How do I know where the higher low is going to be? 
And like usually, it's two things. It's out of your demand zone. This is where like the market actually initiated the move up, right? Or it's imbalance. And a lot of times we tend to wait for that uh, zone to form, uh, for that demand to form. Like in this case, this is the zone, right? So this is where the market is going to go long from. Well, no, it's not going to go long from there, right? It's, it's most likely going to go long from some of these areas that are, that are your hard time from imbalances. So first thing, I'm going to be looking for longs from this weekly zone. If this weekly zone fails, longs from the monthly zone. Very nice, very simple. Now, how can we get to that zone? is by having like some daily uh, bearish uh, trades, but absolutely nothing on the day. Like since, yeah, end of December, nothing this week, nothing. So again, I have no setups. I have no setups on the daily. And again, if I expect this weekly imbalance to form, then maybe we can force it on the 4H, but the 4H is absolutely terrible. So what I'm going to say again, guys, is no setups. I'm sorry, but there are no setups and you have to accept this and move on to the next pair or just don't trade at all. Very bad, very, very tricky. So again, I'm just going to stick to the daily time frame, wait for clear daily moves, or I'm just going to say, well, I'm going to be looking for that weekly balance to form uh, to tap. As it taps, then I start looking for longs. If no longs are provided, then I look for the lower one to go long again. That is high probability trading. You're going to trade less, but when you trade with bigger risk from zones like this, that is when you make the money. Okay. So that is your story. Let's have a look if the other indices are going to give more clues or if they are all the same. All right, so Nasdaq reached its all-time highs and uh, broke above it. And right now you can see immediately the reaction is starting. What I really do like once again is that we have uh, imbalance right there in the monthly time frame. That is pretty much where the market could be headed right now, right? It's, it's the only one, which is a very good thing. Now, the only thing that could stop the market from going all the way down there, if there is something on the weekly, and you can see on the weekly, it is actually being engulfed, right? You can see we had one right there engulfed. Right now we have, of course, one right here and it doesn't look like it's going to hold. So that immediately tells me, it gives me more clues that, well, Nasdaq, maybe it's going to reach for that monthly zone. That means that I'm going to frame a more bearish bias on that one. So, of course, weekly time frame, we're still going to be needing one more week to form a bearish weekly imbalance. Because if right now we form a bearish candle and if we potentially engulf this bullish imbalance right there, the next week I'm going to say, well, well, look for the weekly imbalance to fill and then we target the monthly that is going to be very 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 good but we need time daily time frame purely bearish in terms of structure in terms of momentum it's just bearish uh broke the high broke the low massive imbalance you can see massive move on the way down the most again we have three so the rule is again this is something new i haven't i'm not going to make a video in imbalance guys a lot of you are asking I am still learning and I'm still working my way around it. And I'm going to be a little bit more quiet in terms of education of videos because I'm uh, just working right now more on my knowledge, going a little bit more in isolation because I want to take it to the next level, right? So again, in this case, you can see I'm going to be leaving clues in those videos. Three imbalances. It's either the first one that is going to hold. If it doesn't hold, it's most likely going to be the last one or most likely we're going to be reversing, right? So there is the first one right here and it hasn't been tapped yet so what i would expect to happen on nas is for us to tap inside here and start shifting lower on the lower time frames that's it right because if it starts getting all the way up it's most likely going to start making bullish uh structure and then we might actually turn bullish this is why usually the first one should hold and if the first one doesn't hold like for example you can see here we have this one and we have that one right here and but the first didn't hold it got engulfed well the second one didn't hold as well why well because we're just shifting the structure so this is potentially where i would like to go short from and then this big target in mind and then of course you're gonna have to see this on the on the lower time frame, like the 40 time frame hourly time frame and 50 minute time frame. right now absolutely nothing so what i'm looking for is for the market to tap that daily zone and get short from there. And if something else happens, then of course, we're going to be patient and waiting for a new setup. That is NASDAQ, a lot more cleaner than US 30. So let's see if we can go short next week. SPX did not reach the all-time highs, but that is very good. Why? Well, because we still have some sort of a target to reach for, it, right? Now, what we have on the monthly time frame again, similar to the rest of the indices, is we have a very nice monthly imbalance that is where the market could potentially reach for. That is very good. 
And as I keep mentioning, what is something that could stop the market from reaching all the way down there is if we have some sort of imbalances on the lower time frame than that. But then again, you can see on the weekly, we have this one, it getting it gets engulfed. And right now we have this one as well that the market could react from. Uh, but again, if the first one fails, as I told you, just on NASDAQ, if the first one fails, it's either going to be the last one. We have a lot of those. Like, I really don't think this one is going to hold. Because we have one right here, we have one right here, we have one right here, and the lowest one is all the way down there. So I do believe we are going to be reaching on NASDAQ and SPX, we're going to be reaching for that monthly imbalance from where we could potentially start continuing higher. Okay? Now, how do we get there is by following uh, potentially the daily time frame. And again, on the daily time frame, we don't have anything. We just have this guy right here that is very 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 far away so we don't have much kind of um structure and uh, imbalances to work with it's bearish but we're either going to be looking for new ones to be created or we're going to be looking for a lower time frame ones which we do not have as well so very simply said not, spx does not have a setup it does not have a setup and the only index that i'm going to be monitoring going into next week or at least at the beginning of the week as we start forming those daily candles is nasdaq so spx no clear setup of course, we can expect for the market to turn bullish from this weekly zone. I personally don't think so because if the indices sentiment shifts lower, which is not very um, probable because if if the DXY goes lower from as, as per our analysis, but of course the DXY can also go higher to the monthly zone, right? So that is then going to build pretty much the bias for the rest of the month and even until February because if the DXY wants to pull back all the way up here, then DXY is going to be bullish. And then we're going to know that potentially NASDAQ is going to come into this one. SPX is going to come into this one. EURUSD is going to come into this one. And of course, like pairs like GBPUSD are also going to come into that one. All right. So again, the key for next week is going to be to, uh, to monitor the DXY and whether it's going to start shifting from that very recent weekly imbalance here. Right. So pretty much this is how I'm going to be ending up the video, guys. Let me know what is your setup, uh, like what are your favorite setups for this week. Let me know how did you actually um, uh, celebrate New Year? Did you take a break or did you back this the hell out of the market? Let me know. Personally, once again, I took a very nice break, did some fun stuff. I'm actually very tired because I went skiing right now for two days and I'm broken, right? So let me know what did you do and I can't wait to see you on my next video.